and you are going to hear this term a lot in our next videos. So, let's now understand what is ICE. By ICE, we mean Interactive Connectivity Establishment. Okay. And in simplest terms, ICE is just network address or you can say the information about the network that a device used to send and receive data. Okay. So, you can basically visualize it like uh, some sort of a gate. Okay. And the information about that gate. Okay. Through which the data can come in or go out. So that is ICE for you in the simplest terms. Now, what happens whenever a device is going to establish a connection with another device, okay, then it needs to have a list of all the ways in which it can communicate with the other device. Okay, and that is what we call potential ICE candidates. That means the ways in which these two devices can connect with each other. And when this list is prepared, this list is going to actually include a lot of things. It can connect over local IP address or it can connect over public IP address or it can even connect through a relayed address and through a turn server. So we just discussed turn server and what happens in this third case, these are not going, these two devices that we are going to connect to, they are not going to communicate directly. They are going to first of all send their information like their media to some third party server. Okay. And then that third party server is going to relay that information to another client that we want to connect. Okay. So let's now understand what are the different types of ICE candidates. So first one is host candidates. Host candidates means when the connection is established directly. So this represents the local IP address of the device. Then we have server reflexive candidates. And these are obtained by utilizing Eastern server as you can see. And this is actually the public IP address which is seen from the outside. And this is another kind of ICE candidate. And the third one is trained through turn server and that we call relayed candidates. Okay. And this relayed candidate is actually the last possible way in which the devices can connect when the direct peer to peer communication is not possible. And let's understand by this example. Okay. What are this ICE candidate in detail? So each ICE candidate, as you can see, will be in this form. Okay. It is going to contain certain information. Okay. And let me explain you piece by piece what this is going to convey to us. The first thing that you need to pay attention to is this host. This host means it's a local address that the device is uh, like requesting the other device to connect over. Okay. And it has this priority value at the start. And each ICE candidate that is sent to the other device has a priority value. And this indicates like which method we should use first to communicate okay so that is why these uh, ice candidates are going to have a certain priority value okay then and there is also this specific uh protocol that it's going to use that is udp okay and it is also telling the other device that it wants to connect over this 49172 port okay so that is what we have inside this each ice candidate okay this kind of information is sent between each browser that wants to connect and what happens there is a negotiation process in between as you can see here these devices are going to share multiple ice candidates with each other and they will be verifying if they can connect over that method or not okay until they agree on the most suitable one so when that happens when the negotiation is complete these devices are going to use the ICE candidate that they have finalized that they are going to connect over this. Okay. And then they will be attempting direct peer to peer connection again. Okay? And in case direct peer to peer connection is not possible, then they will be going for turn server. Okay. That means the audio and video will be relayed through a third party server. So that's it. Now we have completed all the theoretical concept that we needed to create this application. If you want these slides, you can download it. Okay, I'll be attaching that in the same module. After this, we are going to actually set up our environment for development. So let's move on to that.